Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Welcome to our Tuesday Bible study. <clears throat> and God has been graciously wonderful unto us. Today, every affliction, frustration, rejection, limitation, oppression, miscarriage, and negative cycle that has followed you up till now terminates tonight, along with February 2023. In the name of Jesus. Can I hear an amen to that? You know that this month is the only month of the year that could not reach 30. Therefore, as this month comes to an end tonight, every limitation in your life and family ends with it in the name of Jesus. Can I hear an amen to that? Now, will you lift up your hands, lift up your voice? And let us bless the name of the Lord. Let's worship him in the beauty of his holiness. Let's adore him. Let's magnify him. Let's glorify him. For there is no one like our God, the God of Jeshurun, who rises in the excellency of his power. He is mighty in word and mighty in deed. He is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, the one who was, who is, and who is to come. Lift up your voice. Give him the glory. Bless his name. Thank him for letting you and I see another beautiful day. For his faithfulness, for his provision, for his protection, for how far he has brought us. Lift up your voice and thank him for his loving kindness that's better than life. Thank him for your family, for your loved ones, for your friends, for your job, for your business, for your career. Yes, that you are accepted in, a, in the beloved. Thank him, hallelujah, for the access that you have through the blood of Jesus. To come to the throne of grace and ask for help in time of need. Lift up your voice and give him the glory. Thank him for your health. Lee Katobra, and there are many that, that started this month with us that are not here today, but he has brought us to the end of the month. Lift up your voice, give him the glory. Give him the praise. Worship him. Exalt him. Appreciate him. Adore him. Father, we give you the glory. Father, we give you the praise. Father, we bless your name. Thank you for all the testimonies, all the miracles, all the answers to prayers. Father, we magnify you. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for what you have done. Thank you for what you are doing. And thank you for what you are going to do. To you be all the glory. In Jesus' name we are praying. Can I hear an amen to that? Now, will you lift up your hands and lift your voices and let's surrender our hearts unto him. Say, Father, I surrender my heart unto you, my spirit, my soul, and my body. Everything that I am and everything that I have belongs to you. You are my God. You are my maker. You are my creator. You are my redeemer. You are my strong, strong and mighty tower. You are my shield. You are my buckler. You are my strength. You are my song and you are my source. I belong to you, Jesus. I don't belong to any other. I don't belong to the devil. I don't belong to the world. I don't even belong to myself. I belong to you, Jesus. Have your way in my life. Rule and reign in my life. Take control of my life. Cantoli, Radoske, Paraj, Andoske, Promosede, Kaskitali, Mazikatania, Lima, Seske, Promosede. Lift up your voice now and surrender every doubt, every fear, every worry, every anxiety, every perplexity, every confusion, every bill, every issue, every challenge, every sickness, every disease, every affliction, every frustration, every disappointment laid at his feet. I promise you, before the end of this service, shall be turned into a testimony. Because he said, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Today, you must have rest concerning that affliction, concerning that pain, concerning that issue, concerning that challenge. Today, help is coming. Lima, Tasco, Parajando, Roske, Promosado, Skutoria, Likado, Skutare, Mazidi, Bradusco, Mosheo, Kakaskara, Maskatere. Father, we surrender our weaknesses and inadequacies. We repent of everything we have done or left undone individually and collectively on behalf of ourselves, on behalf of our families, on behalf of our communities, on behalf of our churches, on behalf of the nations and nations of the world. Father, we invoke the blood of Jesus against every accusation of the enemy, against every curse and every yoke and every spell and every enchantment and every incantation. We invoke the blood of Jesus and we take authority over principalities, over powers, over the rulers of darkness of this world, over spirits of wickedness in high places. We frustrate all the activities. We scatter their works. We paradise their operations. We destroy their strongholds. We bombard their positions. Satan will bind you. Spirits of infirmity, spirits of affliction, spirits of sickness, spirits of disease, spirits of cancer, spirits of death, candle, and those things. Foul spirit, unclean spirits, marine spirits, water spirits, spirits of limitation, of retrogression, of miscarriage. We bind you. And we break your power over the people of God. Spiritual spouses, Masculine spirits, ancestral spirits, we bind you. We serpentine spirits, we bind you. We break your power over the people of God. Anyone under the sound of my voice, under any form of bondage, today we set you free in the name of Jesus. Candle brothers, and we take victory. Now lift your voice now and take victory. In our lives, we take victory. 
In our families, we take victory. In our homes, we take victory. In our business, we take victory. In our jobs, we take victory. In our careers, we take victory. Every day of this month, we take victory. Every day of this year, we take victory. Against the forces of hell, we take victory. Against every assault of the wicked, we take victory. Against every plan of the enemy, we take victory. Gather, they shall gather. But because they, their God is not of the Lord, they shall scatter for your sake. We take victory. Man told you, brother, open your mouth and take victory. The Bible says you shall have whatsoever you say. Take victory over that circumstance, over that situation. Every day of this month, every day of the year, we take victory. Man told again, Bradoske Tali, Zandoske Promo Secretary, and we declare that Jesus is Lord. We lift our voice and declare it, that Jesus is Lord. He's Lord over my life. He's Lord over my family. He's Lord over my home. He's Lord over my business. He's Lord over my job. He's Lord over my career. He's Lord over my children. He's Lord, Lord, Lord over this city. He's Lord over this church. The Lord over this state, the Lord over this nation. Jesus is Lord to the glory of the Father. In Jesus' name we are praying. Can I hear an amen to that? Can I hear a believing amen to that? Somebody shout hallelujah. God is going to touch you today in the name of just right where you are. As the message is coming forth, it doesn't matter what I'm teaching. The power of God will be there to address your needs. Whatever it is. Are you expecting God to move on your behalf? Then lift up your voice, lift up your hands and tell him what you're expecting him to do. Amen. You don't come into the presence of God and expect to live empty and then no, it cannot happen. In the name of Jesus. So be ready for the move of God, for the touch of God tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, there are many scriptural strategies for spiritual warfare. But today, we shall be discussing God's basic battle strategy. God's basic battle strategy. Our objective is to understand the basis or foundation of God's battle plan. And our anchor text comes from 1 John chapter 3 and verse 8. He says, He who sins is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Lift up my voice. Say, Father, speak unto me. Touch me. Heal me. Deliver me. Give me my word of victory. Give me my word of breakthrough. Change my story. Let me hear your voice. Impact my life. I don't want to live here the same way that I came. Can't only Radoske is in here. Father, thank you for your word that is forever settled in heaven. Speak unto us, Lord. Let us hear your voice. Change stories. Your word comes with power. So touch lives. He'll deliver. And we promise to give you all the glory in Jesus' name we are prayed. Can I hear an amen to that? Can I hear a believing amen to that? Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. So what is God's battle strategy? Now, God's basic battle strategy sits on two pillars. It sits on two pillars. Number one is purpose. Understanding the purposes of our warfare. Proverbs chapter 19 verse 21. It says, many are the plans in a person's heart. But it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. Isaiah 14 verse 24. The Lord of hosts has sworn, saying, Surely as I have thought, so it shall come to pass. And as I have proposed, so it shall stand. God has a purpose. Amen. And understanding the purpose of our warfare is critical. Is an important pillar on, on which God's purpose, but, sorry, God's battle plan or battle strategy rest. And the second one is communication. Communication with our commander-in-chief or our command structure in heaven by prayer, fasting, and the written word of God. Jeremiah 33 and verse 3, he says, call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Communication, call to me say, and I will show you. I will answer you and I will show you great and mighty things which you do not know, which when you get to know about them, they will give you victory. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17 to 18, he says, And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end, with all perseverance and supplication for all 
the saints. God's basic battle plan sits on two pillars, purpose and communication. So let's look at purpose. Amen. Number one, no war is fought without a purpose. Because purpose provides the fuel for motivation, for morale, for morale, for morale and for commitment. No war is fought without purpose. In the natural, every war has a purpose. Amen. Sometimes the purpose is communicated to those fighting the war. Sometimes they are deceived <laughs> as to what the purpose is. <laughs> Amen. But every war has a purpose. Now, point number one A. Purpose must be well communicated by the authorities or by the command structure and understood by the troops to secure their commitment and dedication. Purpose must be well communicated by the authorities and, 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 and understood by the troops to secure their commitment and dedication. Without a clear communication of purpose or a clear understanding of purpose, the morale of the troops, troops will be easily discouraged. That's the kind of thing we see in the, in the, in the Russia-Ukraine war. Amen. The Russian army is not well motivated. Why? Because the purpose has not been communicated clearly. Or they have been, they've, been, they've been embellished and embedded with lies. So the purpose doesn't have a foundation. Amen. Because when you send people to go die, amen, for a cause, the cause must be well communicated to them. And they must buy in into the cause. In fact, that's what point number one B was is saying here. He said, discouragement and consequently defeat in the battles of life arise when people do not understand the purpose and plan of God in that conflict. Discouragement and consequently defeat in the battles of life arise when people do not understand the purpose and plan of God in that conflict. Job struggled, amen, even though he held his faith, he struggled when he was being afflicted, amen, but part of the challenge he had was that he didn't understand the purpose of that conflict. If he was privy to the conversation between God and the devil, amen, he would have borne it, he would have been able to handle it more, better. Can I hear an amen to that? See, that is why many Christian soldiers fail in warfare. Many people get defeated because they do not understand the divine purpose behind the battle. Amen? There is a divine purpose behind every battle that you face. I wish you can get that. There is a divine purpose behind every battle that you face. Understanding of divine purpose will give you the courage to deal with, to face that battle squarely. And the confidence to know that you're going to win. Can I hear an amen to that? Now, when you adopt this point number one C, when you adopt God's purposes as your vision, when you adopt God's purpose as your vision, because God has a purpose, and you adopt it as your vision, you become unstoppable. You become someone that no battle can phase you out. You, 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 you become indefatigable. <laughs> Candela, just get out of here. Amen. You become undefeatable when you adopt God's purpose as your, as your, as your vision. When you not only adopt it, you understand the purpose. Amen. I cannot be defeated because every battle the devil throws at me, I understand the purpose. Every battle I come across in life, I understand the purpose. Can I hear an amen to that? So you become unstoppable. And not only are you unstoppable, you gain access to all of God's resources for a victorious and prosperous life when you adopt his purpose. When you have a revelation of what that purpose is and it becomes your vision for life. Can I hear an amen to that? Acts chapter 5, verse 38 to 39, the NIV version. Gamaliel was speaking here to the Sanhedrin. He said, therefore, in the present case, I advise you, Leave these men alone. He was talking about disciples, the apostles, when they were arrested. Let them go. For if they are purpose or activities of human origin, origin, it will fail. But if it is from God, you will not be able to stop these men. You will only find yourself fighting against God. Hello? If you carry or you adopt the purposes of God, you are unstoppable. I hope somebody is getting that key. Because that just came. Amen. Do you want to succeed? Do you want to be unstoppable? Do you want to have access to all the resources of heaven? Do you want to be undefeatable? 
unfailable, if there is such a word, then adopt the purposes of God. Get a revelation of the purposes of God and make that purpose your vision for life and you will be unstoppable. That's what Matthew 6.33 told us. It says, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. Seek first the kingdom purposes. Amen. Seek first God's purposes. Make his purpose your purpose. Make his purpose your vision. And everything people are struggling for will be added unto you. Everything you need, amen, for a victorious life, for a prosperous life, for an enjoyable life. You are here to enjoy life. Remember that. Everything you need will be supplied unto you without stress, without struggle. Why? Because you are aligned with the purposes of God. And God will fight your battles. Can I hear an amen to that? Amen. So, that takes me to the second question. What is the purpose of God for spiritual warfare? What, because God has a purpose. So, we want to understand what that purpose is. Amen. So that, so that you can adopt that purpose. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Number, number two, A. To gather together all things in Christ. To gather together all things in Christ. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 10. He said that in the dispensation of the fullness of the times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on, on earth in him. God wants to bring everything he has created together under the rulership, under the dominion, under the influence, under the kingdom of Christ. That's what's going to happen Amen. After the millennial reign. You know, in the millennial reign, Christ will rule here for a, for a thousand years. Then the Bible says that New Jerusalem will come down from heaven. Now, if you read Revelation, I'm just digressing a little bit. Amen. That New Jerusalem, amen, is a city that is that is 15 miles square, 15 miles, uh, 15 miles long, 15 miles width, and 15 miles high. So that city will reach up to the heaven. You know what it means to go to that's into space. Amen. He will reach up to heaven. Amen. And who will be living in the city? I will be going up and down from heaven. That city will connect heaven and earth. Amen. 15 miles long, 15 miles high, and 15 miles width is a square. And 15 miles high. Can I hear an amen to that? Can I hear an amen to that? So, Purpose number one, to gather together all things in Christ. Purpose number two, to put all things under the feet of Christ. Psalm 110 verse and verse 1, he said, The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. 1 Corinthians 15, 26 to 28, he says, The last enemy that will be destroyed is death, for he has put all things under his feet. But when he says all things are put under him, it is evident that he who put all things under him is accepted. Now when all things are made subject to him, that's subject to Christ, then the Son himself, which is Christ, will also be subject to him who put all things under him, that God may be all in all. That's God's purpose. Amen. That's why we are taught to pray that kingdom come. The Bible says that of the increase of his government there shall be no end. So the government shall be on his shoulders. And of the increase of his government, there shall be no end. All things will be under his jurisdiction, under his rulership. Can I hear an amen to that? Amen. And it's going to be a reign of peace. It's going to be a reign of joy. It's going to be a reign of wealth. A reign of abundance. And an eternal reign forever and ever. That's God's purpose. So, if you are connected to that purpose, then you become unstoppable. Amen? Now, point number two, see, as a believer, your own personal spiritual warfare is related to this purpose of God. Because God works in you to accomplish his purposes. If you are a believer, amen, you are enlisted into the kingdom of God. And you are supposed to fight for the purpose of the kingdom. And these are the purposes of the kingdom to gather all things together in Christ to bring more souls into the kingdom. Amen. So that everything will become under the rulership, under the reign, under the dominion of Christ. Bring everything subject, make everything subject to Christ. 
So that becomes, that's the purpose you're fighting for. So every battle you're fighting in your personal life is related to this purpose. The devil doesn't want you to pursue this purpose. Amen. Because God works in you to accomplish his purposes. Philippians chapter 2 verse 3 says, For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. He works in you to will and to act in order to accomplish his good purpose. It's God that's working in you. So as a believer, God is working in you. Amen. He's preparing you, working in you to fulfill his purpose. So he might bring some things against you and allow some things, allow some things to come against you. Allow some things to, to, to come in your favor. All that to work his purpose out. For instance, when the early church started, they were living fine. Everything was fine in Jerusalem. Nobody was going anywhere. Then he allowed persecution to come. It was the sense of the persecution to scatter them so they can take the gospel to all the places, all, to the ends of the earth. Because they were getting comfortable in Jerusalem. Amen. That's why sometimes when you get into that comfort zone and you see that you're not doing anything, you don't want to go to your next level, God will do some shaking. So when you get too comfortable in that job and God is saying that, hey, amen, that job is not my destination for you. I need you to open a business. I need you to move to the next level. I won't be able to bless you with all the millions and all that I want to bless you in that job. So I need you to do, I need you to do this or go to that next level. And to go to that next level, you may need to quit the job. But you're not get, you don't want to quit the job. Go, you're afraid. So what does it do? There's some shaking. And then you got fired. <laughs> got laid off. <laughs> amen. So that you can see the vision that he has for you. Can I hear an amen to that? Amen. Can I hear an amen to that? So he works in you to accomplish his purpose. Oh, let me give you another story. Remember the story in Luke chapter 5? When the Bible says Peter has toiled all night and caught nothing. He told that he did not cut nothing so that he would give his boat to Jesus. When he has caught something, when Jesus came to preach, he wouldn't be there. He would be carrying his fish and carrying and all this and, and going. He wouldn't, be, he, wouldn't be, he wouldn't be in a position to give his boat to Jesus for Jesus to preach with. He didn't catch anything. So when Jesus came and said, can I use your boat to preach? He agreed. And when he finished preaching, Jesus said, go into the deep, cast your net for it. Throw your net for a catch. He did. And he caught a boat sinking miracle. And that changed his whole life. Peter went from a fisherman to become a fisher of men. I'm just trying to tell you that God works in you to accomplish his uh, purposes. Point number 2D. God also works through you to accomplish his purposes. Amen. Romans chapter 6 verse 13. He said, and do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin. But present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. God works through you to accomplish his purposes. Now, to present your members as instruments of righteousness is to bring your life and your ministry in harmony with God's purposes. Is to bring your life and your ministry or bring your life and your purpose or bring your life and your vision or bring your life and your desires in harmony with God's purposes and plans. And when you do that, it makes you a target of the enemy. Because that's exactly what Satan does not want you to do. And that's why he fights you. Because you're trying to bring your life in harmony. Bring your life, your thoughts, your desires in harmony with God's purposes and God's vision. Can I hear an amen to that? Praise the Lord. So that takes me to number three. What is the purpose of Jesus Christ in spiritual warfare? What is his purpose? Point number three here. Jesus came into the world to destroy the works of Satan, period. That's why he came. To destroy the works of Satan. Now that sets him in opposition, immediately in opposition to the devil. He came to destroy the works of Satan. First John chapter 3 verse 8. Say, he who sins of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. That's why he came. To destroy the works of the devil. So if the works of the devil is flourishing in your life, amen, the purpose that Jesus came is being thwarted. If sickness is raining, that's the work of the devil. This are raining. The purpose of Jesus came is being thwarted. That's why he came. John 10 verse 10. He said, the thief does not come to, except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. If you are not having an abundant life, 
then you are frustrating the purpose for which Jesus came. You are not fulfilling that purpose. You should be having an abundant life. Can I hear an amen to that? Now, point number 3B, from the beginning of his ministry, early ministry, Jesus said about destroying the works of his sinner. We see that. From the beginning of his early ministry. Amen. Point number B, he revealed the bondage of sin. Amen. John chapter 8, verse 34. Jesus answered them, most assuredly I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. Because he, his purpose was to destroy the works of the devil, so he revealed the bondage of sin. Point number B2, he forgives sins. He forgives sins. Amen. Matthew 9, 2. He said, then behold, they brought to him a paralytic, a paralytic lying on a bed. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, son, be of good cheer. Your sins are forgiving you. He's trying to destroy the works of the devil. Point number B3. He, he emphasized the heart condition rather than the deception of outward appearance. He emphasized the heart condition rather than the deception of outward appearance. Luke chapter 6 verse 45. He said, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. Luke eleven thirty one. Then the Lord said to him, now you Pharisees make the outside of the cup and dish clean, but your inward part is full of greed and wickedness. He emphasized the heart condition rather than the deception of outward appearance. He said the, heart, the condition of your heart is more important than your outward appearance. That doesn't mean that your outward appearance is not more, more important, but your condition of your heart is way more important. So he was telling the Pharisees, why are you keeping the outward appearance clean when you're not cleaning up the inside of your heart? Inside you're, 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 you're full of dead men's bones. Can I hear an amen to that? Amen. Amen. So he said about destroying the works of the devil. How did he do that? Point number B4. He healed the sick. Matthew 11 verse 5. He said the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up and the poor have the gospel preached to them. So if you are sick today, be healed in the name of Jesus. Every sickness under the sound of my voice dies now. In the name of Jesus. Because he came to destroy the works of the devil. And sickness is a work of the devil. It is never of God. Amen. Number five. He raised the dead. Luke chapter 7 verse 14 to 15. So then he came and touched the open coffin and those who carried him stood still. And he said, young man, I say to you, arise. So he who was dead sat up and began to speak. And he presented him to his mother. He raised the dead. So whatever is dying in your life, in your body, maybe bodily organ, maybe your kidney, maybe your pancreas, maybe your heart, maybe your brain, it comes alive now in the name of Jesus. Or maybe your business, it comes alive now in the name of Jesus. And then he delivered those oppressed or possessed by demons. Amen. Matthew chapter 8 verse 16. So when evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon possessed. And he cast out the spirits with a word and healed all who were sick. So every oppression under the sound of my voice terminates now. In the name of Jesus. I said every oppression, demonic oppression, demonic harassment, demonic affliction. Under the sound of my voice, terminates now in the name of Jesus. Somebody under the sound of my voice that something is crawling underneath your skin. skin. That thing dies now and is flushed out of your system in the name of Jesus. Somebody with a fibro, that fibro just melted. Somebody with a growth, that growth just disappeared. In the name of that lump in your breast just vanished. Check it, it's gone. In the name of Jesus. Can I hear an amen to that? Because he came to destroy the works of Satan. Point number three C. Jesus not only destroyed the work of Satan, he also exposed the tricks and strategies of the enemy so that we will be able to deal with the enemy. Amen. Amen. Point number C1, he warned about the multiplication of deception of the devil in the last days. He said in the last days, deception will increase, will multiply. We're seeing that all over the place. 
Matthew chapter 24, verse 24. He said, For false Christ and false prophets will, will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. False, and they are all over the place today, all over the place today, taking advantage of gullible people and gullible women and men. Amen. And manipulating them for their own selfish gains. Can I hear an amen to that? But you will not be manipulated. You will not be deceived in Jesus' name. Amen. Point number C2. He taught us how to avoid falling into temptation. Amen. Matthew 26 and verse 31. He said, watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. That is the secret for avoiding temptation. Watch and pray. He taught us that. Point number C3, he revealed how Satan tries to prevent the word of God from being effective in the lives of people. He revealed that. How Satan operates. Amen. Because this is part of destroying the works of Satan. Luke chapter 8 verse 12. Say those by the wayside are the ones who hear. When it, Then the devil comes and takes away the word out of their hearts. Lest they should believe and be saved. Lest they should believe and be saved. Devil come to take snatch the word out of their heart. That's why you must guard your heart with all diligence because out of it are the issues of life. You must meditate on the word and memorize it and don't let the devil snatch it from your heart. You must understand it and apply it to your life. Can I hear an amen to that? Amen. Point number C4. He revealed our sin and tries to hinder our growth and fruitfulness. How he tries to choke, choke Christ out of our lives through persecution, through turning behavior. Matthew chapter 13 verse 24 to 25. He said another parable he put forth to them saying the kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field but while men slept his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. Why did the enemy sow tares? So that the tares would, would, would stop the wheat from producing or from growing. We hinder the wheat. Prevent nutrition from going to the wheat. Amen. Compete for resources with the wheat. That's why the enemies, the wicked, is competing for resources with us because they want to prevent us from, from spreading the gospel, from controlling the resources that will spread the gospel. Amen. And of course, verse 13, verse, same, um, chapter 13, verse 38, he says, The field is the world, the good seeds are the sons of the kingdom, but the tares are the sons of the wicked one. That's why there are wicked people amongst us trying to sabotage, manipulate. Amen. Cast spells on our activities and our lives. Hinder the purposes of God in our lives. There are wicked people. They are in government. They are everywhere. They are in families. They are in your family. They are in my family. They are everywhere. Amen. Sons of Belial. Sons of the wickedness. Witches and wizards. That oppose the purpose of God in our lives. That mock. Can I hear an amen to that? Amen. So he revealed that to us. So that we'll be able to deal with them and handle them. Can I hear an amen to that? Number five. He revealed Satan as the prince of the world. John chapter 14 verse 30. says, Hereafter I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world comes, comment, and had nothing in me. Satan is the ruler of the world, of the systems of the world. We'll talk about systems in our last teaching. And then number six, point number C6. He gave us power, authority over all the powers of the enemy. He came to destroy, and then when he was living, he gave us power over all the powers of the enemy. So that we, so that we can continue to destroy the works of the devil in the lives of people. The works of Satan in the lives of people and bring them into the kingdom of light. Can I hear an amen to that? Luke 10, verse 19. Say, Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. You have that power. Don't make don't let the devil make you feel powerless. You have the power over him. Amen. You have the power over him. All you need to do is to believe it. Open your mouth and declare it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Command him. And you know the Bible says, say, resist the devil and he will flee from you. You have the power. You don't need to do 40 days fasting. 40 days fasting is good, but you don't need to do that. You have the power. Just believe it. Can I hear an amen to that? When he say, I give you power, he gave you and I power. 
Because what I say to one, I say to all. What he says to one, he says to all. That's to you. You have power. Can I hear an amen to that? Stop being fearful. I don't know why I'm talking to you. Stop being fearful. Stop being afraid. You have power. Now release your power by opening your mouth and commanding. Because if you shall say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, you do not doubt in your heart, you will have whatever you say. You have power. Can no brothers get out of this In Jesus' name. Amen. So, so we have seen the purposes of Jesus, of, of God, in spiritual warfare. We have also seen the purposes of Christ. Amen. In spiritual warfare. Now, do you know your purpose? Amen. Do you know your purpose? Amen. Do you know your purpose? Can I hear an amen to that? Let me give you a hint. Point number 4A. Your purpose is to become like Christ. Yes. That's why you were created and you were saved. Romans chapter 8 verse 39. He said, for whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the first but among many brethren. God wants you to be like Jesus, to talk like him, to think like him, to act like him, to believe like him, to, to wrought miracles like him, to save souls like him, to love like him, to be compassionate like him. Amen. That is your purpose on earth. That is our destination on earth. Our destination on earth is not to go to heaven. Heaven is just incentive. Our destination is to be like Christ. So that we can spread the influence of Christ all over. We can spread the kingdom of God. Because it takes being like Christ to spread the kingdom of God. Amen. Philippians chapter 2 verse 5. We say, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Let this mind be in you. And that scripture in Colossians says, you have the mind of Christ. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I'm releasing it to you now. You have the mind of Christ. For everyone under any pressure of insanity, you have the mind of Christ. You are healed in the name of Jesus. Because I see somebody with pressure on the side of your head. And sometimes you forget things. And sometimes I see things are talking to you. And sometimes you act funny. But that pressure just lifted now. You have the mind of Christ. Say, say, I have the mind of Christ. Say, I have the mind of Christ. Say, I have the mind of Christ. You have the mind of Christ. And I speak peace into your life. And you have a sound mind in Jesus' name. Can I hear an amen to that? So what is your purpose? Do you know your purpose? Let me give you another hint. Point number 4B. Your purpose is to offer your body as a living sacrifice in order to fulfill the perfect will of God. To offer your body as a living sacrifice in order to fulfill the perfect will of God. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 to 2. He said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the message of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Your purpose is to present your bodies as a living sacrifice. That is acceptable unto God. And how do you do that? You do that by not being conformed to the world. But allowing yourself to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So that you fulfill the will of God. The perfect will of God. Which is the perfect purpose of God. That is your purpose. Amen. Amen. Do you know your purpose? Point number four C. Your purpose is to be the light of the world. And the salt of the earth. To be the light of the world. And that's why you're here. Amen. To be the light of the world and the salt of the earth. Matthew chapter 5, verse 13 to 14. He said, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? Amen. It is then good for nothing, but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. And you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. You are the light of the world. You can stop hiding. Oh my God. You are the light of the world. Stop hiding. You are the salt of the earth. Don't lose your flavor. Amen. You carry light. To be the light of the world is to show the world the way to a better life. That's your responsibility. That's your job. That's who you are. To shine the light and chase away every darkness around you. Beginning from your family to your community to your nation. Chase away every darkness. Can I hear an amen to that? Because you are the light of the world. And to be the salt of the earth is to prevent the world from decay and corruption. 
is to prevent the world from decay and corruption. Amen. You are the, you are the salt of the world. Not to allow the world to rot. Amen. So you are supposed to bring standards of purity and holiness. Amen. And righteousness into your community, into your life, into your family. Not to follow in the decadence of the world. You are the salt. Can I hear an amen to that? The anointing and the grace to be light and salt is released upon you right now. In the name of Jesus, your light will shine. So shine before men that they will see your good works and give God glory. In the name of Jesus, your light will bring many to Christ. In Jesus' name. Amen. Be light. Be light everywhere. Stop being gloomy. Stop thinking all about yourself. You are the light. A light doesn't serve itself. It serves others. Can I hear an amen to that? Amen. What is your... Do you know your purpose? Let me give you another hint. Point number 4D. To share the gospel and make disciples. That is your purpose. To share the gospel and make disciples. Amen. To share the gospel and make disciples. Matthew chapter 28 verse 19 to 20. Say go therefore and make disciples of all the nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always. Even to the end of the age. Amen. To make disciples. Amen. Share the gospel. Invite them to church. Maybe say I can't share. Just invite them to church. Pray for them to come to church. Pray for them to be saved. Pray for them to be delivered. Pray for them to be established in church. Make disciples. Share the word with them. Share this video with them. They're going to help make disciples. You're sharing all kinds of things online. Share this video with them. Share other teachings with them. When they call you and they say, oh, I'm depressed. We have teachings on, on dealing with depression or heaviness. Look for that video on YouTube. Share it with them. Can I hear an amen to that? Make disciples. Go out and win souls. Amen. Point number. Do you know your purpose? Let me give you another hint. This is point number 4E. To be a vessel of honor, fit and ready for the master's use. To be a vessel of honor, fit and ready for the master's use. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 21. Say, therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel, of, a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. A vessel of honor, fit and ready for the master of use. God is a spirit. The only way he can operate on this earth is through us. That's why the Bible says that you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. You are the temple of God. We are the temples of God. He oppressed through us so bad we must be ready. We must, we must be fit. We must be ready. We must be prepared. We must be sanctified. We must be set apart. For that purpose, we must be holy. For him to, pre to walk through us. We must cleanse ourselves of all pollution, of all filthiness, of the flesh and of the spirit so that God can move through us and impact the world and impact our community and impact our families. That's why we get sanctified. So that we carry his presence. Carry his power. Amen. Carry his spirit to wherever we go and change the lives of people and change the lives of communities and bring hope to the hopeless and bring healing to the sick and bring, and bring, and bring deliverance to the oppressed and bring wealth to the poor. Can I hear an amen to that? Amen. Amen. Do you know your puzzle post? Let me give you another hint. Point number 4F. To represent the kingdom of heaven on earth. Do you know that you're God's representative on earth? Amen. If you are born again. Psalm 5, verse 19 to 20. Say that is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God we are pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's be behalf, be reconciled to God. We are ambassadors. You are ambassador of Christ. We are in this world, but we are not of this world. Amen. 
That's why the standards of the world must not affect us. The economy of the world must not affect us. The pressures of the world must not affect us. We are ambassadors. We represent heaven. You are ambassadors. You represent heaven. Amen. So is there heaven in your home? Is there heaven in your office? When you go by, you carry heaven. You are ambassador. Ambassador of heaven. Ambassador of God. You represent heaven. You represent God on earth. So when people see you, they see, you see God. When they see you, they will see the attributes of the, of the kingdom, of God, of heaven. Amen. So when you come into a situation, you bring the peace of heaven, you bring the joy of heaven, you bring the wealth and the provision of heaven because there's no poverty in heaven. Can I hear an amen to that? Somebody shout hallelujah. You bring the healing, the power of heaven. Amen. The power of the age to come into the lives of people because you represent him. Somebody say, I represent him. I represent heaven. I represent God. So wherever I go, I carry heaven. I carry God. That's why when you show up in a place, they can't reject you. Because nobody can reject God. Amen. They can't oppress you. They can't defeat you in battle. Why? Because you carry his presence. At his presence, the mountains melt and the hills they skip like rams. The sea dries up at his rebuke. Obstacles are removed from today. Every Kale Radioskitalia. Every obstacle in the way of your next level is removed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Do you know your purpose? Let me give you another hint. Point number 4G. To bring God glory. Your life is supposed to bring him glory every day. Amen. Did what you did yesterday bring him glory? Did what you did today bring him glory? Did you do anything today to bring glory to the Lord? Amen. Look at it. Because it was for this purpose you were created. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 21. Say, these people I have formed for myself. They shall declare my praise or they shall declare my glory. Amen. There will be a reflection of my glory. A reflection of my image. Amen. Is your life bringing glory to God? John chapter 15 verse 8. He said, by this my father is glorified that you bear much fruit. So you be my disciples. Is your life bringing glory to God? If it's not bringing glory, then you don't know your purpose. Can I hear an amen? You're supposed to live every day for his glory. To bring him glory. At the end of the day, you need to ask yourself, say, what did I do today? Or where did I go today? How did I think? How did I feel? What is it about me? Did anything I do today bring glory to God? Was God glorified in my life today? Or I did things that caused him shame? That made people mock your God? Can I hear an amen to that? Not just what you do, but also other things. That's why the devil wants to afflict you because the devil, when the devil afflicts you or when, when he oppresses you, people will look at it and say, well, she's serving God. If, she, if, she, if, she, if she's a reflection of God, if she's a reflection of God, then she shouldn't have this affliction. That blind man, a man that was born blind, the, 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 the disciples asked Jesus, say, who sinned? The man on his bed and just said, no. It's so that God's name will be glorified. Amen. Not that the affliction will glorify God, but the healing of that affliction will glorify God. And that's what happened when Jesus healed the man. He glorified God. Amen. So today, whatever in your life that is robbing God of his glory, today they are terminated in the name of Jesus. Everything in your life, whether there are afflictions, whether there are sicknesses, whether whatever it is that's robbing God of his glory, today they are terminated in the name of Jesus. Can I hear an amen to that? Can I hear a believing amen to that? Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. So we said earlier that the battle strategy of God rests on two pillars. One, purpose. And then the second one, communication. The second pillar is communication. In natural warfare, communication is critical to victory. There must be clear, reliable, and uninterrupted, uninterrupted, uninterrupted lines of communication between the troops in the front lines and the command structure. It is the same in spiritual warfare. Communication is critical. So, and in spiritual warfare, the lines of communication with our commander-in-chief or with our command structure are point number two A, prayer and fasting. Prayer is conversation with God. 
and fasting enhances our sensitivity to spiritual things and our capacity to hear God clearly. And then B, the written word of God. The written word of God or the Bible contains all of the counsel and the plan and the purposes of God and is the foundation for understanding the purpose and plan of God for us in this dispensation. Can I hear an amen to that? But our time is gone, so we'll discuss this and others in part two of this teaching. Lift up your hands and give him praise. Give him the glory, give him thanks. Bless his name, worship him, adore him. Thank him for what you have received. Thank him for what you have received. Now, if you are watching, I do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I want to invite you to make Jesus your Lord and your Savior today. Can I pray with you right where you are? Lift up your hands and say after me, say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. And I need you to save me. I believe you died for me and rose on the third day that I may be justified. Today I confess and repent of all my sins. I forsake them. Forgive me, Lord Jesus. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Be my Lord and Savior. From today I confess you as my Lord and Savior and promise to serve you in the name of Jesus. Can I hear an amen to that? Now if you pray that prayer with all your heart, we believe you got born again. Wherever you are, look for a Bible, believe in church, and be planted. Those that are planted, they shall flourish. Or you can join our church online or in person. Our website will tell you how. And I promise you, God will take you places you've never been before. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you today that the grace that has brought you, that grace will preserve you, that grace will prosper you, and that grace will establish you in Christ Jesus until it's coming in Jesus' name. And I release the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I break the power of sin over you. You will never go back to your vomit again. In the name of Jesus. And I release the baptism of the Holy Spirit upon you. Receive it now with the evidence of praying in tongues. In Jesus' name. Amen. Can I hear an amen to that? Now make sure to reach out to us through any of our contact points. So that we can send you resources that can help you with your work with the Lord. And also keep you in our prayers. Welcome to the family of God. Everyone else, lift up your voice and pray this prayer with me with all the heart. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, grant me and every member of this church a deeper insight into your purposes and how each one of us fit into your plan. Help each one of us to really offer our lives as living sacrifice for you to make us vessels of honor, fit for the master's use, and mold us into the image of Christ so that we will be effective light and salt to our world and bring you glory in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and pray. Help each one of us really offer our lives to the Lord. For you to make us persons of honor, fit for the master's house, and mold us into the image of Christ, so that we will be able to live our lives to our own way, and then we will be able to live our lives to our own way, and then we will be able to live our lives to our own way, and then we will be able to live our lives to our own way, and then we will be able to live our lives to our own way, and then we will be able to live our lives to our own way, and then we will be able to live our lives to our own way, in Jesus. Nay, we are brave. Receive grace for a deep revelation of the purpose of God in your life and how you fit into his plan in the name of Jesus receive grace to offer your life as living sacrifice not holding anything back from God so that God will make you vessels of honor that is fit for his use and mold you into the image of Christ so that you will become an effective light and salt to your world and bring him glory every day of your life in the name of Jesus. Can I hear an amen to that? Now I have 60 seconds for you to pray for whatever your need is.
Jesus name we are prayed. Can I hear an amen to that? Every request that you place before the Lord, they are answered. They are answered. The answer in your hands. In the name of Jesus, this month, tonight, this month will not pass away until those answers enter your hands. In the name of Jesus. Now, receive this prophetic declaration with your loudest amen. As this month comes to an end tonight, everything that's troubling you, ends with it. In the name of Jesus, the Bible says that it is a righteous thing with God to trouble those that trouble you. So as this month comes an end to die, everything troubling you, whatever, if it has a name, it terminates this month. In the name of Jesus, it cannot cross over with you to the next month. In the name of Jesus, can I hear an amen to that? Every demonic dream, negative picture and vain imagination that's challenging your breakthrough or your or your pregnancy or your or your or your turnaround they dissolve today in the name of Jesus every lying voice satanic thought projections and accusations that is a, that's contesting who you are in Christ Jesus your legitimacy and authority in Christ Jesus today they are silenced in the name of Jesus every strange voice that is manipulating your mind that voice is silenced by fire today forever. In the name of Jesus. Every distracting diversion, temptation to settle for less, an unholy compromise that's contending with your promotion, your enthronement this month is frustrated today. In the name of Jesus. Fears battered by assaults in the dream, subconscious pictures from past experiences, and contrary words that are holding your turn around and enthronement hostage. They lose their power over you today. In the name of Jesus, you shall break through your fears today. I say you shall break through your fears today. I say you shall break through your fears today. You will make significant advancement towards your goal and destiny today. You shall make it. You cannot fail. You cannot be sick. You cannot die without your permission. You cannot lack. The word of God concerning you and your family is settled in heaven. Therefore, no contrary picture and no mental manipulation of the enemy can cancel or limit the effectiveness and fulfillment of the word of God in your life in this season. In the name of Jesus. Can I hear an amen to that? Now I lift up your hands and give him the glory. Give him thanks. Give him the honor. Thank you for answering to prayers. Thank him, La Conde Bradaske. Le Sondeske Italian. Give him the glory. Thank you for what you have received. In Jesus' name, we give thanks. Can I hear an amen to that? Every issue you came to church with today, they are turning to glorious testimonies. In the name of Jesus, I'm sure you've been greatly blessed. Amen. Be blessed. Amen. Be blessed. Amen. Now, this Sunday is our second Sunday of the seven Sundays of supernatural liftings. Last Sunday was explosive. You don't want to miss it. Amen. If you're in the greater Houston area, make sure you are in the service. Amen. It's going to be so powerful. Amen. Bring the sick, bring the lame, bring the... Come and see the power of God manifested. Doesn't matter what issue you came to church with, it will be dealt with this Sunday. In the name of Jesus, Jesus will be present to heal them. And I promise you, if within these seven Sundays you are not lifted supernaturally, then Jesus is not Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Can I hear an amen to that? Lift up your hands for the closing prayer. May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob defend you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and strengthen you out of Zion. May he remember all your offerings and accept your bond sacrifice, Selah. May he grant you according to your heart's desire and fulfill all your purpose. We will rejoice in your salvation. And in the name of our God, who set up our banners, may the Lord answer all your prayers. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Can I hear an amen to that? Amen. Lift up your hands for the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. Lift up his countenance over you and be gracious unto you. Cause his face to shine upon you and give you peace. Make you a thousand times greater than your dreams and a thousand times better than you think and a thousand times wiser than everyone thinks and a thousand times richer in every good and gracious thing. The Lord make you a thousand times healthier in your spirit, your soul, and your body and a thousand times happier every day of your life. 
in Jesus name we have prayed. Can I hear an amen to that? Amen. Let's share the grace in fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, bless and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Go, come back with your testimonies in Jesus' name. Amen. Good night and thank you.